You know, there's so many things going on in the mind of a parent with regards to their child participating in sports. Will my child be safe? I hope he or she really likes this sport like I did. What if the coach is bad? What if he has no real talent? Will, will she just sit the bench all year? What will I do if he doesn't want to go to practice? Can we afford the travel and other expenses? How will we get him to those midweek early games when we both work? If you think it's confusing for you, children in sports today face much more uncertainty and anxiety than our generation. Whatever you do, it'd be very wise for you to let go of any ideas you have about how it was in my day playing sports. It's totally different. Today the game has changed dramatically. I'm not, I don't care what sport you're talking about. With, with much more pressure put on children coming from all angles and at earlier and earlier ages. On the other hand, if you do it right, sports can offer some of the most powerful life enhancing experiences a human being can have. We teach children through sports our brand of mental toughness, which is focused, confident, determined, and resilient, especially under pressure. Think that might be useful for life? These skills can be learned by kids as young as seven years old and, and they translate over to all areas of their life. Now I'm here to help you achieve that for your child. Here's a typical case study of one of my clients. Carol, a parent of a 10-year-old Little League baseball player, Mitch, called me for help with her son who was showing visible signs of fear that was holding him back in both basketball and baseball, his two favorite sports. Mitch came to me with Carol for the first session. As I delved deeper into the issues, it was obvious that Mitch's father, Ben, was putting too much pressure on him to perform well in his sports. After every game, Ben would make sure and go over with Mitch everything he did wrong and what he needed to do that week in practice to fix it. This is a 10 year old, remember. Mitch's nervous system was all tied up in knots every time he stepped onto the field or courts. He was doing everything he could to please his father, who he worshipped and, and would do anything to gain his approval. Mitch was actually a better than average athlete and his dad wasn't being mean or negative, but there was certainly a problem between them that needed correction. Now Mitch, like many kids, was a bit more sensitive than average and, was, and, and he was taking to heart his dad's head shaking and, and telling him what to do from the stands and, and is constantly needling him to work on his game at home. Now all Mitch was really receiving from it all is, I'm not good enough. I can't ever please my dad. Mitch's little 10 year old brain thought that the only way to be good enough was to try harder. At game time, this kind of thinking triggered his little nervous system into anxiety, which made it even harder for him to perform. See, you can't try harder and expect to make more basketball shots. You can't try harder and get more hits in baseball. It doesn't work that way. For kids to perform their best, they have to be in a frame of mind that is as natural as playing a game with their buddies in the sandlot. After the second session, Mitch opened up to me and admitted what was going on with him. I actually set up a session to work with his dad, Ben. In talking with Ben, I could tell he was a really great father and cared very much for his son. Like most sports parents, he only wanted to see Mitch become the best he could be. He said he was just passing on to his son what his father had done for him and felt that since it worked for him, it should work for Mitch. Now it took some convincing, but I finally got through to him and many parents since him, since then, that this, his son is not him. I explained that Mitch is his own person with his own unique way of processing things. And if he wanted to support him, he was going to have to make some changes in how he talked to him. I told Ben that the bottom line to helping his son is to never communicate with words or body language that his approval is dependent on his son's performance. This means that if his son strikes out in baseball and, 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 and uh, he, he sees him sitting on the bench, he better see a dad smiling at him with two thumbs up and telling him that he's still the best later on. It means that after the game that Ben doesn't offer unsolicited advice on how Mitch could have played better. 
It means that dad had to change from being his coach to his biggest fan. Too many parents think that if they let off of all that pushing, that somehow it's, it's going to be lost on the kid. Not true. Now this advice, it worked like magic. Ben was shocked at how his child's performance took off after he made the changes I recommended. Mitch ended up winning MVP for his Little League Baseball team and the next season in basketball led his team in scoring. The key to assisting your child to get the best sports has to offer is in not thinking they are a smaller version of you or just a short adult. What I mean by that is too many adults want to push kids too hard at too young of an age where all it ends up doing is creating a program of lacking self-confidence. Is that what you want for your kid? If you have any doubts about when to teach and offer advice to your child, ask them. They are the ultimate authority on what they want. I'm Craig Sigal. Let's do this.